Hey guys, today we are going to talk about high balls and how to deal with them. What's the best footwork to do in each situation? We're also going to do a few drills to explain how you can get better at it. I know a lot of you struggle with those high balls and, and what to do exactly. And we also have Coach Ramon here today. He's going to give us some great insight on how to best work on it. We want to work a lot on those things. Uh, most of my clients, they are always asking me what I have to do when the ball is coming really high. Do I need to move back? Try to hit on the rise? Should I be aggressive? So probably when you are advanced between 3.0 and 4.0, usually high balls is really difficult for everybody. There is a lot of footwork, a lot of decision that you have to make to hit the, the right shot. So let's get into it. The balls that we were talking about, high balls are coming deep. Okay, they are not short balls that we move up to put it away. They are balls that are coming usually high, heavy with some spin. Um, the first mistake that people do is like they are like that. Probably they do a good speed step and then they see the ball flying and they freeze. They don't react. They are thinking, oh my God, this ball is coming really high and deep. What should I do? And then they don't turn. They don't move the feet. And at the end, when they want to move, it's too late. And they, they end hitting somewhere too high in the shoulder or just pushing the ball in. So the most important thing is to, when you see this ball flying, split the step and react. Already shoulder turn and then you can move in, move in and try to hit on the rise. Or maybe if the ball is coming more difficult, you can move back and hit a high ball and back again. So first thing, split the step and quick reaction. I think it's really important to understand that everything depends on the length of the ball. And if that's the ball judgment, right? And that's, I think, what causes people's most trouble. Like, why should I do this? Ball was higher, but was a little shorter. Should I wait? Should I not? This was went deeper. Should I go back? Should I take it on the rise? And I think that when you have that clear in your mind exactly what you have to do, it's when you eliminate those mistakes, you already exactly know what you have to do. So the first choice I always tell my, my student is always try to hit on the rise. If the ball allows it, always it's better to stay here and try to hit the ball on the rise, okay? Always. That way you are taking time away from your opponent, you're going to put more pressure. It might be a little bit more risky than moving back and hitting a deep ball and high, but if you want to be an aggressive player, always try to hit high balls on the rise. We're going to do a few drills to show you how we can hit on the rise and which balls are suited for hitting on the rise. Not every ball is a good idea to hit on the rise. Some of them, if they're too short, it's literally impossible to hit on the rise. But anything basically that's around this area right here, anything that's around this area, we want to hit on the rise. Meaning sometimes we got to make a little step here. Sometimes we maybe got to move a little bit here, but that is the area we want to hit on the rise because basically the bounce, the ball is bouncing somewhere around this area and we can take it right, right off the bounce. What happens is when it's too short, we can't, we don't have enough time to run all the way here and take the ball right off the bounce. We can move up, wait for it and kill it but that is not the same as hitting on the right that's just a different type of shot so right now we're going to do the ones that are high and deeper and i'm going to hit on the right All right, so those are the kind of shots we want to hit on the rise. No, no, there was a, a one ball that was a little bit shorter and I had to make a few extra adjustments up to the ball. So it's a lot of footwork. And also take a look at how low I had to get when the ball bounced around this area when it's deeper. And I want to take it on the rise because I want to make contact around this area. I have to get very low. Okay, we can't be hitting on the rise with our legs straight. This is not hitting on the rise. When we hit on the rise, the contact is around this area, hip level. Sometimes it's even lower, okay? That way we're taking the ball right off the bounce. Another valid, valid option is uh, hitting the ball moving back, okay? In some situations, you are not going to be able to hit on the rise. Maybe you misjudge the ball, it's coming higher and heavier than you thought. Maybe you are playing on clay. You see, when you, when you see matches on TV, you see on clay, the professionals, they have to play farther back on the court. Why? 
sometimes the ball is coming with so spin so heavy that trying to hit off the bounce is really difficult so this is when we move back with a couple of steps we load the legs and we try to hit high and heavy and get back on the court all right i always try to tell my students to find a good height for me the chest is the highest you should be able to to aim to hit the ball anything above the shoulder or chest you are not gonna get power here you're gonna be uncomfortable hitting the ball so i'm here i move as bad as bad as i need to be able to generate power and hit deep and heavy enough and have give myself time to be back on the court <clears throat> All right, so that was the second type of shot that we can use for high balls. We can really use our legs low to go back and give the ball enough height so that we come back into the court. So we have the on the rise, we have the ball that we can go back load and generate that good height and spin again and get back into the point. And now we're going to go into our third shot, which is a spinny ball, but a little bit shorter that we can attack it, move up to the ball. On this ball, know that there's a lot more time I can either load or I can step in depending on the height of the ball. So if it's a little higher, I'm going to load, but I'm going to move up into the court. All right, guys, so those were the three type of shots. Now, the most important part is that you know what you're going to do with each ball. So you already know you're here in your position, you're in your split step, and you already know by the time you split step whether you're going to need to move up, whether you're going to take that ball on the right because the ball is coming deep, or whether you're going to have to go back because that ball is coming a little too high and too spinny. Okay, that's the most important part that you react in time. So when the ball is crossing the net, you should already know exactly what you're going to do. If the ball is bouncing and you don't, you don't know yet what you're doing, you're going to be late. You're not going to hit a good shot. That is the most important part about this shot. All right. After discussing all the high balls that we have, all the types, what you're going to do, I'm going to give you this bonus drill that I love using it with all of my students. It's a drill where the coach, or even if you have a ball machine, you're going to, you're going to be hitting high balls, but random. Some high balls are going to be close to the baseline, so you hit off the bounce, so some balls are going to be even higher and you have to move back. So that way you get used to deal to any type of high ball, all right? And to react fast and choose the right shot to hit. All right, guys, thank you for watching. This is Gabby and Ramon from Vantage Tennis. If you found this video useful, please make sure to like it and subscribe for more videos like this.